first up, tweeting from space. So, I guess a lot of people had already thought that NASA had already started using Twitter from the International Space Station, but according to TechCrunch.com, uh, just a couple days ago, they made the announcement that the first live Twittering had been had been done from space for the first time. And in the past, what they had done is actually emailed the Twittering, the, emailed the tweets back to back to the Earth, and then the NASA scientists would actually retweet it. So that that was cheating, and that wasn't live tweeting. And so what we have now is an actual. It's called Crew Support Land. It's basically what NASA is calling the the most uh, powerful wireless internet available. But basically, it's all it is is taking advantage of uh, all the all the already existing uh, wireless connections going to the International Space Station and allowing the astronauts to basically use remote desktop to to control a computer from from the International Space Station down, down back on Earth and just control the Earth computer to do whatever they want. So there's, it's really weird, like they can't really have a server in space yet, but I don't see why they couldn't if they can actually send information back and forth. You can send packets to a satellite. Couldn't you theoretically also have a server on the moon? Perhaps we could uh, put servers on the moon after we invest in our lunar real estate? No. But anyway, Flight engineer T.J. Creamer first made use of this new system Friday when he posted the first unassisted tweet to his Twitter account from the space station. So yeah, and previous tweets had to be emailed from the ground, and so this is the first live tweeting. So this is pretty exciting. This is going to go down in history as the first live uh, like uh, social media uh, use from space, which is going to be important because when you think about it, and there's there's people living on Mars and the moon in the future when we have those places colonized. You're going to want to be able to communicate with family and friends through social network sites like Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter. And if you can't, you know, the internet's not going to be very fun if you can't use it while in space because what else are you doing in space? This next news update I thought was really exciting. It's also from TechCrunch.com. Basically, this article is uh, titled, See that funny 2D barcode in the store window? It might pull up a Google listing. This article is about uh, something called a QR code, and what a QR code is, um, is basically a, 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 a square barcode with four squares in the corners, and it just looks like a bunch of black and white digital static, like digital camouflage or something like that, monochrome, black and white, and what it is, is the barcode that, you're that you can actually scan using your iPhone or Google phone uh, by taking a picture of it using uh, a free or a paid app from the Android store or the iPhone store that basically t uh, allows you to take a picture and then send it through a database that will uh, figure out what the barcode dec decodes the, the barcode and then apparently it can send you to a link, it can send you to a location on Google Maps, it can send you to a Google directory. So I thought this was really cool because uh, I actually did some research into this and I found a website called uh, awod.com and they have a section of their website for QR code generation. Um, so you go to QR code.kaywa.com and this is basically a QR code generator and this is really useful. It's all free. You can put in a, a link, a text, phone number, or even a text message and what it will do is generate a barcode for you, a QR code, for free. And what you can do with this QR code is you can print it out, put it in a public space, you can put it on your website, I don't know why, but you know, it's funny though, if you think about putting a, a code that you scan with a phone on a website, well, what's the point of that? Well, um, a lot of websites might be displayed on a giant big screen TV in Times Square, or you might have like a digital um, advertisement on a billboard, and you might want to show off a uh, QR code. I actually found some pictures online of, uh, of some QR codes being used for businesses basically to promote something like uh, on the lines of augmented reality 
at the storefront. So you'd go there and you'd, and you'd go to the, like a uh, an advertisement for the for a coffee shop in front of the coffee shop on the outside, like through the window. You go look at this code, you scan with your phone, and it'll bring up the coffee shop's website without you actually having to type in the website and look at it and visually confirm and and re and re and use your yourself as the as the barcode generator. You actually use your phone as the data. Uh, analysis and retrieval system. Up next, we got uh, this this website called litracon.hu, and there's also a website called luson.com/de. Uh, this this website litracon.hu, it basically um, is a manufacturer uh, of light transmitting concrete, and this is a concept I found on the website doorknob.com a couple years ago and this is some pretty awesome stuff it is basically what it is is concrete they take concrete and lay fiber optic cables along the concrete so that when the concrete dries you, you basically have one one end of the fiber optic cable of one side of the concrete and the other side of the fiber optic cable the other side of the concrete and it's you know just hundreds of, of fiber cable of little fiber optic cables running through the concrete and uh, in three dimensions, so you basically end up with, with transparent concrete. And for building and architecture, this is fantastic because you can actually have like a translucent building, and yet it's still, you know, it's not made of glass, it's not made of plastic, it's made of concrete, and it's just as hard as any other concrete, if not harder, because of the, the fiber that actually uh, really, really helps the integrity of the concrete. And, uh, you know, this stuff's just, it's just amazing. And it's so simple, too. We could have had something like this 50 years ago. It's just, it's really cool the way uh, some of these ideas are, are, are things that could have been done 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and yet we're just, we're just getting around and doing them now, which really goes to show you that if you have a business idea, if you have some idea that seems too simple to be, to be and it's too good to be true and just too simple to even implement, you, know, you think some, you know, there's no way I can make money off something this easy, just go ahead and try and just do it because chances are no one's probably marketed it as